Have you ever heard of a conspiracy theory that left you asking yourself, why do people believe in this stuff? Take, for example, this conspiracy theory reported by Ars Technica on August 15th, 2023. Horrible wildfires in early August devastated Western Maui in Hawaii, tragically killing at least 111 people. Multiple causes for this tragedy have been discussed in the media, like severe weather conditions, drought, problems with the water pressure, and insufficient communication about the spread of the fire, among others. My condolences go out to anyone who's been affected. But did you know that someone out there is peddling a story that the fires were set off by a directed energy weapon from a satellite in space? Does that sound implausible? What about this picture? That certainly looks incriminating, doesn't it? Well, the problem is that photo is from May 2018, when a Falcon 9 was launched from Vandenberg Air Force Base in California. This particular photo was a long exposure shot that captured the flames of the rocket as it shot into space. It is not a photo of a laser beam coming down from space. Still, that hasn't stopped conspiracy theorists from using this old photo to make claims that the Hawaiian wildfires were started on purpose by the U.S. government. I recently posted a couple of videos on this channel about some cases of science fraud. Those videos attracted a far greater number of views than I usually get. Although my goal was to discuss why such fraud occurs and what we can possibly do about it, those videos received attention from people who must have thought they were going to provide evidence about why science can't be trusted at all. In particular, people criticized me for going soft on Fauci, vaccinations, and the climate scientists who've warned about human-caused global warming. Clearly, a lot of people have very strong ideas about conspiracies and what's going on in the world, and they were quite vocal about them in the video comments. In this video, I want to talk about why people believe in conspiracy theories and the dangers that are associated with some of them. I will rely on top quality research in social psychology, which I'll talk about throughout the video. I end the video with some solid tips for evaluating the truthfulness of a conspiracy theory. Let's get started by understanding why these theories are so enticing. According to Karen Douglas and Robbie Sutton, in this comprehensive 2023 review of the research literature published in Annual Reviews of Psychology, there are three main reasons people find conspiracy theories appealing. Our need to know and understand things, our need for control, and our social identities. The first is what we call epistemic motives. We humans love making sense of the world. When faced with a complex event, we often prefer simple, clear-cut explanations rather than the messy, confusing truth. Conspiracy theories do just that. They simplify the complex. For example, take this Maui wildfire directed energy weapons theory. Hawaii is supposed to be this lush rainforest paradise. How could there be drought conditions there? And high gusty dry winds that spread the fire so quickly? How could that be? Well, such a catastrophic event seems too simplistic, so theories of a larger, more complex plot took root. In fact, researchers have found that people who are more likely to believe in conspiracy theories are more likely to look for patterns and meaning where none exists, to hold paranormal beliefs, have lower analytical thinking, and have a higher need for cognitive closure. Uncertainty is particularly uncomfortable for these people. Next, we have existential motives. When things go awry, we crave safety and control. Conspiracy theories help us feel in control by blaming someone or something specific. For instance, during COVID-19, theories blaming certain countries or organizations for creating the virus made some people feel safer as they had someone to blame. Or take climate change. Most scientists say the Earth will grow warmer due to human causes and result in all sorts of catastrophic changes. That's pretty scary stuff. Even if you don't personally live long enough to experience those changes, your children might. And that's definitely anxiety provoking. What some people have appeared to do then is adopt a belief that there is a conspiracy among climate scientists and government officials to make it all seem worse than it is. If you adopt that belief, then there isn't really any reason to worry today. 
That particular conspiracy theory provides safety and control. Your kids will live happily in the same conditions that you grew up in. Consistent with this motive, Douglas and Sutton pointed out that people believing conspiracies have more feelings of anxiety, powerlessness, and a sense of a lack of control. And what will probably not be a surprise to you, conspiracy theories tend to become more popular during times of crisis and social unrest. Think of Germany in the 1930s, for example, when Jewish people and other groups were blamed for working together to create all the economic problems in the country at that time. Lastly, our social identities play a role. Believing in a conspiracy theory can make us feel unique, superior even, and strengthen our bonds with like-minded individuals. Think about flat earthers. They find community and identity in their shared belief despite the overwhelming scientific evidence against them. This is where a phenomenon known as collective narcissism comes in. Members of low status groups often have an inflated sense of positivity towards their group while feeling undervalued or under threat. Certain demographic characteristics also appear in people more likely to believe in conspiracies, like lower levels of education, low income levels, being male, unmarried, or unemployed. This may drive the epistemic need for knowledge or threats to security in existence. Keep in mind that all of these are correlations with beliefs and conspiracies, and therefore are not necessarily the causes for such thinking. Research even shows that believing in one conspiracy makes you more likely to believe in others. Strange, right? But many of these aren't just harmless beliefs. They have real world impacts. For example, people who watched the Oliver Stone film JFK, which presents a conspiracy theory about who supposedly really assassinated Kennedy, afterwards were less likely to engage in politics, like voting or donating to politics, than those who hadn't watched the film. Conspiracies can also lead to more radicalized and extremist methods, not through the usual democratic voting channels, but perhaps by endorsing violence to make change happen, influencing political attitudes. This may lead to other forms of protests and occupation of buildings and vandalism. Believing in conspiracies is also associated with prejudice and outgroup derogation. Antisemitism is highly correlated with endorsement of conspiracy theories, for example. Believing in conspiracy theories also affects people's acceptance of scientific findings. As I mentioned, an obvious example that I recently encountered in my recent videos on science fraud is people who believe that climate science is a giant hoax. As such, they're less inclined to support any actions to lessen the human carbon footprint. In fact, according to Douglas and Sutton, experiments have shown that exposure to conspiracy theories, suggesting that climate change is a hoax, reduces people's intentions to become more energy efficient or to sign a petition to mitigate climate change. Such beliefs in climate change conspiracy theories are correlated with conspiracy theories about science in general, like genetically modified food and the origins of the AIDS virus. Finally, believing conspiracy theories can have all sorts of implications for health behaviors. Remember the rumors about 5G causing COVID-19? These theories resulted in 5G towers being burned down and people refusing to take vaccines. In fact, believing in conspiracy theories leads people to take more risks as they become more present focused and looking for quick answers rather than thinking about long-term implications or solutions for their behaviors. We've come a long way in understanding the psychology of conspiracy theories, but there's still a lot we don't know. Researchers like Karen Douglas, Kai Sassenberg, and Matt Hornsey, and their many colleagues are investigating how conspiracy theories are transmitted and how they might be dealt with more effectively before they cause widespread harm and adoption. The role of the internet and social media in spreading these theories, for example, is a ripe area for research. I'm including a list of some of these research articles in the description below, so you might want to read them later. Regardless, the more we learn about why people believe in conspiracy theories, the better we can help counteract their harm. Who knew psychology could be this exciting? Huh? Finally, let's say you encounter a conspiracy yourself that seems like a plausible explanation for something important. How do you know whether it's true? 
Evaluating the truthfulness of a conspiracy theory requires a combination of critical thinking, research skills, and an understanding of cognitive biases. Here's some advice on how to effectively assess the veracity of a conspiracy theory. One, research the origins. Trace the theory back to its source. Who first proposed it and what evidence did they provide? Consider the credibility of the source. Are they a recognized expert in the field related to the conspiracy? Do they have a track record of spreading misinformation? Two, check for evidence. A conspiracy theory should be based on concrete evidence, not just speculation. Look for primary sources that directly support the theory's claims. Remember that anecdotal evidence or individual testimonies can be misleading. Comprehensive, replicable studies and expert analyses are far more reliable. Three, look for contradictory evidence. Be wary of confirmation bias, where you only seek out and believe evidence that confirms what you already think. Actively seek out information and viewpoints that challenge the conspiracy theory. If the theory can't stand up to scrutiny, it's likely not valid. Four, consult experts. Find experts in the relevant field and see what they say about the theory. Peer review journals, recognized institutions, and professionals are often good resources. Remember that not all experts are equal. Ensure they're recognized in their field and don't have conflicts of interest related to the conspiracy. Five, evaluate logical consistency. Does the theory make logical sense from start to finish? Or does it rely on a series of unlikely events and assumptions? Occam's razor is a principle suggesting that the simplest explanation, requiring the fewest assumptions, is often the correct one. If the conspiracy theory seems overly complex or relies on many assumptions, consider simpler explanations. Six, consider the scale. Ask yourself how many people would have to be involved for the conspiracy to be true. The more people that are involved, the harder it would be to keep a secret. Seven, understand cognitive biases. Be aware of your cognitive biases, such as the aforementioned confirmation bias or proportionality bias, which is the tendency to believe that big events must have bigger causes. Eight, check fact-checking websites. Websites like Snopes, factcheck.org, and PolitiFact are dedicated to verifying claims and debunking falsehoods. They can be valuable resources for evaluating the veracity of conspiracy theories. Nine, beware of echo chambers. If you're only getting your information from one source or a group of like-minded individuals, you might be in an echo chamber where only one viewpoint is represented. Branch out and seek diverse sources of information. 10, emotional appeal. Be wary if the conspiracy theory seems designed to appeal to emotions, especially fear or anger. Emotional reactions can cloud judgment and make it harder to think critically. And number 11, stay open-minded but skeptical. It's essential to remain open to new information, but that doesn't mean accepting everything at face value. Maintain a healthy level of skepticism, especially when you're confronted with extraordinary claims. By following this advice and remaining vigilant in your own research, you'll be better equipped to differentiate between a well-founded theory and a baseless conspiracy. So the next time you come across a conspiracy theory, remember our brains are wired to find them appealing, but that doesn't mean they're true. If you found this video enlightening, please consider sharing it to help spread awareness. Have you personally debunked a conspiracy? How have you remained open-minded yet skeptical about theories that you have encountered in everyday life? I would love to hear about your experiences with conspiracy theories in the comments below. Stay curious, stay rational, and keep digging for the truth. See you in the next video.